Hey guys, welcome along to this tutorial. Here we're going to be talking about the Xero integration with Workflow Max and how it all works together because there are a lot of people out there that are not using the integration between Workflow Max and Xero and it's such a powerful integration to be using to really streamline your workflow in your business. So the people that are using both Workflow Max and Xero and not even integrating the two and there are other people that are also using Workflow Max and using another accounting system. Now uh, today I don't want to go through uh, the ins and outs of Xero, uh, I just want to show you a bit of an overview of how the integration works and I'm also going to show you how to set that up as well. So if you are using those two apps you're going to know after this lesson exactly how to integrate the two and what to expect from that integration also. So to do that, uh, I'm going to log into Workflow Max and Xero now, jump into the demo company and I'll talk you through how we do all that. So here we are in Workflow Max in my demo company which is All Blue Jays Limited and if I jump into the other tab, we're in the Xero Demo All Blue Jays Limited. So uh, these two accounts aren't integrated so before I started this tutorial I disconnected the integration between the two of them because I want to show you how we set that up. So I'm going to cover off uh, how to set up the integration and I'm going to cover off the ins and outs of how to do that and then we're going to look at some examples of how the integration works. So before I do that I actually just want to talk about what integration actually is. Now an integration is when an application programming interface is communicating with another piece of software. So an application programming interface is also known as an API. So you may have heard in the past someone talking about an API or API documentation or anything like that. That's what we're talking about. So when we hear API, we think integration. So to explain uh, an API, uh, I want you to think about, uh, let's say zero. So this is zero and this is workflow max. So we'll use my hands as examples. Now let's say we want to send an invoice from workflow max to zero. Now what happens is we generate that invoice and then when we hit approve on that invoice, it creates an API call. So Workflow Max then communicates with Xero and says, hey Xero, we've got an invoice ready to send. And Xero goes, great, what is it Workflow Max? And it says, right, well we are going to give you the, uh, the client, the amount, the subtotal, the GST, the reference and all that information. So it sends all that information through and then Xero takes that information and it creates an invoice based on that uh, information that's received from Workflow Max. Then it sends a communication back to Workflow Max advising it that it has accepted the information and it's all gone smoothly. And that's what happens between two applications that are connected via an API as they can communicate like that. So Workflow Max and Xero have a, um, an integration so you don't have to do anything difficult to set it up. It's as easy as clicking a button and putting in some configurations there and that is what we're going to do right now. So uh, back into uh, Workflow Max here, I'm going to go into Business and down to Settings. And on the right hand side you'll see Zero under the Connections. Okay, because I'm logged into Zero, when I hit Connect to Zero, it's going to pop up a uh, give me a pop up and ask me which account I'd like to connect with. Now, if you're not into if you're not logged into Zero it's going to ask you to log in and then it'll give you the option of uh, which account you want to connect with. So let's do that now, I'm going to hit connect to zero. And then it says Workflow Max would like to access like access to your zero data and then I have to choose from my drop down list which account I want to integrate with. So if you do have multiple zero accounts, they're all going to come up in a list. So for me, I've got a bunch of clients that use zero so I've got a big list of them but I'm going to select um, all Blue Jays Limited like that and then hit access, allow access. This would redirect us back to Workflow Max. And what that does is uh, Workflow Max is now going and looking in zero for the chart of accounts. So the interface information, it wants to know what our income and what our cost of sales accounts are because when we generate an invoice in Workflow Max when the, when the API uh, sends the information through uh, to Xero, it needs to, oh sorry, when, when uh, Workflow Max sends the information through Xero's API, it needs to know where to code that revenue to because we can't just create an invoice in Xero with no revenue code because then it's going to be redundant then we have to go actually enter data there. So this is what it's asking is, where, which income account do you want this invoice to post to? And what it does is it defaults to uh, your first revenue account, which here is production sales, but we could choose things like custom sales, other revenue, interest income, whatever it is. So I'm going to stick with production sales here. Then cost of sales, that's for our purchase orders. So we've got cost of goods sold, advertising, purchases. 
we'll just leave it there at the moment at cost of goods sold. Now moving down, oh and sorry, I just want to touch on the, the fact that um, that interface information, uh, so our incoming cost of sales accounts, we can override that to, for example, uh, when we send an invoice, depending on what job category the job is in, that's where that revenue is going to post, or we can break out our time and our, uh, and our sorry, our tasks and our costs to go to different revenue codes. So this is just our global settings, this is our defaults, but we can go and override that when we get into more customization of the application. And we cover that in uh, later modules uh, within this course. So uh, clients and suppliers, uh, it's saying uh, when, when do you want to update the clients and supplier information in Xero? And we can either do it never, so they don't talk to each other, only when uploading invoices, but I think the preference is every time a client or supplier details are updated in Workflow Max, we want to notify Zero. So we'll leave that as is. Uh, contact person, uh, do we want to update the contact person and email when uploading invoices? Now this this is uh, I generally leave that ticked because if we create a if we have a new accounts person, we may want to update Zero. So we just update it in Workflow Max. That's going to communicate that with Zero, but. Uh, if you have a situation where you have an agent that's working on behalf of a client and you're updating that in Workflow Max, you probably don't want to go through and update your records in Xero every time you create an invoice. So that's an example where you want to leave that unticked. So what I would do in your situation is I'd leave it ticked and if it's causing any issues, that's what it will be. You can go and untick that box. Now invoice descriptions. This is just saying do we want to include an invoice description uh, from Workflow Max into Xero? So I usually say yes. And what job details do you want to include? And you can go and customize that uh, as you'd like. And it gives you a bit of a hint there about what each of these uh, fields mean. Uh, do we want to send task notes through uh, to the invoice? Have a play around with these settings really. Um, that You can't really break anything here. But these are important down the bottom. Do we want to mark invoices as approved in Xero? Now my preference is to say no. So when I create an invoice in Workflow Max, I want it to create a draft invoice in Xero for me. The reason I like that is because I like to check uh, all of my draft invoices before I go and approve them. Uh, I do that for two reasons. One is that you've got that double, um, you, I suppose you've got that, um, that uh, checkpoint there to make sure that everything is correct. And the other thing is I also like to just have a quick snapshot of how much I've invoiced throughout my billing period. So um, when, when I, once I've done all my invoicing in Workflow Max, I'll jump into uh, zero, into my drafts, and I can see exactly the figure that I've billed for the month. And I quite like that as a process. But if you don't want that second step in there, you'll just tick that box nice and easy, and those invoices will go straight through to approved. The next one is use zero number sequences. So uh, Workflow Max has its own number sequences for invoices, but if you'd like to use the zero number sequencing, you can tick that box there and automatically import payments applied to invoices in Xero. So in Xero, when we reconcile payments against invoices, uh, once that invoice is met, um, has been flagged as paid, uh, if we tick that box, it's going to import that payment back to Workflow Max and let uh, Workflow Max know that that invoice has been paid. Now, my preference is, uh, I leave that ticked because it's, it's not gonna hurt anything, but I'd strongly advise you not to use Workflow Max as your debtors ledger. Use zero for your debtors ledger. So when you're looking at, um, so when I say debtors, I mean accounts receivable. So who owes you money? Be looking at zero to see who owes you money. Don't look at Workflow Max because um, you know all Workflow Max is a place to send your invoices and you do all your reconciliations down in zero. Uh, the last thing is purchase receipts. So when we're creating purchase orders, what information do we want to flow through? Uh, on, from our purchase order down to our accounts payable in zero, and lastly, mark receipts as approved in zero. So just like this uh, invoice one here, when we receive a purchase order, do we want it to go to draft or do we want it to go to uh, uh, awaiting payment? And my preference again is I prefer these to go to drafts, but totally up to you guys, but at least you now understand how to integrate the two apps. So all I need to do, once I've configured it, hit save. Easy as that. So we're all integrated. You've successfully connected the Zero organization, all Blue Jays Limited. So what I want to do now is take you through two things. One is I want to send an invoice from Workflow Max, and one is I want to send a purchase order from Workflow Max. Uh, sorry, receipt a purchase order from Workflow Max, and I want to show you how these integrate with Zero. Now that I've said that, I actually want to do it in reverse order. I want to do the purchase order first, and there's a reason for that. So let's start by creating a job. Now bear in mind, I, I'm just going to race through creating a job here. This is not how you should create your jobs. Uh, later in the module, we cover all the different processes in Workflow Max. 
So this is by no means how you should be setting up your jobs, but I'm just gonna race through and go, let's go um, 20, what's a nice number? We'll go 26 um, Queen Street. I'll cover all this in a later tutorial, don't worry about what I'm doing here. I'm just setting a job up. Okay, so we've got a job set up now. Now I'm gonna create a purchase order. So I'm gonna to go to financial and then go to new purchase order. And the idea behind doing a purchase order is we're able to capture an expense against the job, which is then billable. And it's also going to take the invoice for that purchase order and put it into zero for us. So totally integrated between the two systems there. So it's omitting that double entry of having to capture your cost against the job and then also have to put that, um, that invoice into an accounting system for reconciliation. So a very, very key benefit here. Uh, let's go for Mr. Hardware next. And now we're generating our purchase order. So let's say we want to do, so we're gonna buy a chair. So that chair is gonna cost us $90, and then we can add this to the purchase order. Now to generate that purchase order, what we can do is hit issue and print. And then what that'll do is uh, generate a purchase order for us that we can send to our supplier. Once they send the goods to us, uh, then we can receipt that purchase order. I'm gonna stick, uh, skip a step here, and I'm gonna go issue and receipt. And there's reasons that we do this, and I cover those uh, later in the course. But I'm gonna go issue and receipt. Just wanna just do this a little bit faster. Put the invoice number in. So our invoice from Mr. Hardware was invoice 5444. And then I'm gonna go save. And what, that, what that's done is I've receipted a purchase order against this job. So now uh, job 77, so 26 Queen Street, has now got a cost of $90 against that job. And we can see that uh, in our estimated billings, we've got $117 to be invoiced because we've got that markup that we've put on our purchase orders. Now I'm gonna jump into zero, and I'm gonna show you how that uh, looks in our accounts, our accounts payable. So here in zero, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to accounts and then down to our purchases. And what you'll see is we've got a draft invoice sitting here for $103.50 and it's from Mr. Hardware. So if I click in here, you'll see there is the chair and it's for job 77, purchase order number 43. So that's the information that we set up in our integration that comes through on the purchase order. So all we need to do now is hit approve and that's gonna be sitting in our awaiting payment. So when we make a payment to Mr. Hardware, uh, that's gonna match up in our reconciliation page. So it's really, really nice and simple. Just like that, bill's been approved. Now I'm gonna send an invoice. So if I go new final invoice, and I'll discuss the difference between new progress and new final invoice in a later tutorial. At the moment, I'm just going new final invoice. Uh, we're gonna go actual time and costs because we wanna pick up um, that, that item that we've put against the job for our chair. And our unit price is $117 plus GST. So uh, I'm going to go approve and print. And remember that word approve. When I hit approve, that's when it makes the API call. That's when it sends the information to zero. So approve, even though I haven't printed it yet, it's gonna be sitting in zero right now. But I'll print this invoice. Just like that. And then I can email it off to our client. Now back in zero, I'm gonna to go to sales. You'll see we've got a draft invoice in here. And that's to Bobby McGilbert, which is our customer or our client. Click in here and you'll see it's brought through all the information as we've set up in our integration. And then all we need to do is hit approve. Now, last thing I wanna cover off is what if we make a mistake? There's a very common question I get is, uh, I've made a mistake to this invoice or a mistake to this purchase order, how do I rectify that? Now, what you, you can't edit invoices or receipted purchase orders in Workflow Max. You can only delete or void them. So if you do make a mistake, you're gonna to need to go through and delete it and then re-put it through. So that's straight away, you can't edit them. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump back into this invoice, which we, we are in the invoice. So two, there's two things here, cancel invoice and delete invoice. Now canceling the invoice is gonna remove it out of zero also, and deleting the invoice will remove it out of Workflow Max, but leave it in zero. I'll say that again, canceling the invoice We'll remove it out of zero and leave it in Workflow Max, but it'll keep it as a cancelled invoice. So it won't go against our actual financial summary on the job, but it keeps an audit trail of it. Deleting the invoice completely removes it from Workflow Max, but it'll also leave it in zero. So the best process here is we wanna cancel the invoice and then we delete the invoice. 
I'll talk you through that. I'll take you through that now. So if I go cancel invoice, are you sure you want to cancel the invoice? I say yes. Now I'm going to have to go find the job again. Oh, 26 Queen Street. And if I go to the financial tab, you're going to see that we've got an invoice here. Final invoice, but it's actually been cancelled. So I'm going to click into it, and you'll see that in here we've got this invoice that we've just approved in zero. So I'm back in zero now. If I hit refresh, you'll see it is now voided. So it's going to remove that from zero for us. Now, if we want to completely remove this invoice, we're now going to delete it. So it's going to remove any history of that invoice in Workflow Max, and it's just going to leave it sitting here as voided within zero. And then what we can do is go put through that invoice again. Now, that works really good for your invoices, but with your purchase orders, you can't cancel and delete a purchase order. The only option we've got is to delete a purchase order, then you have to go back into zero and then delete it also. So the integration with, um, with the invoices, our sales invoices, is we can remove them out of zero, but if you do delete a purchase order receipt out of Workflow Max, you're gonna also have to go down to zero and delete it out of there as well. So I hope that's been a good little tutorial on how the integration between Workflow Max and Xero works. Um, you know, if, if you are using both of these applications, I'd strongly recommend setting them up um, to integrate the two. And that's because it's gonna save you a huge amount of time entering your data and emit a huge amount of double entry in the business. And if you are using a different accounting system, I'd strongly recommend considering Xero because the efficiencies you can get without having to enter things more than once. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. The next one coming up, uh, oh, so the next the tutorial is coming up, uh, we're looking at picking the right process for your organization. So depending on what industry you fall into, is, it will depend on what process you need to be using. So uh, choose the ones that you need to watch, watch them, and I'm sure after you finish this module, you're gonna have a much better idea about how you should be using Workflow Max for your industry. Okay guys, um, yes, yeah, so that's about it for now, and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the next video.